So, in the previous video towards the end, I mentioned sub-emitters, so let's take a quick look at that. So, when you have your particle system selected, go over to the inspector and scroll down to you see this sub-emitter. Put a check next to it and expand it. And you'll see that there's three different times that, or events, in which sub-emitters can be spawned. Birth, collision, and death. Now, it's important to differentiate particularly between collision and death because uh, in this particular example, we have the boards shooting up and they collide. Now, when they collide, they don't necessarily die. They keep going. Okay? So, collision may just be a dust cloud. They hit and dust cloud appears. Death, they might still be rolling in the air when they suddenly die. So, uh, it's possible that uh, spawning something at the natural death of the particle doesn't necessarily make any sense. You might actually need to force when this occurs, and that's one of the things we're going to look at. The way you do that is with collision. We uh, applied this last video, and one of the things that we didn't look at was min kill speed. It defaults to zero. So what you can do is you can actually force it to get killed at a slower speed. Now, depending on its speed when it collides, okay, you could actually have this get destroyed upon collision because you've slowed the speed down. And that's basically what we're going to do in this. Now, in uh, what you're doing, you may not want that. Maybe you're using the particle system to spawn a bunch of hand grenades, and then when the hand grenade uh, comes to an end and it, it, it dies, it should actually explode. So that's an example where, yeah, you do want to, uh, you're really not looking at a collision, you really want this to suddenly explode wherever it, it is. So let's go ahead and create a sub-emitter. So for collision, what you're going to do is going to click on the plus sign for the first one, and a sub-emitter is created. If you look over here, here's the sub-emitter. So for the second one, click on the circle, not the plus sign, and just go ahead and click that same sub-emitter. You could actually choose multiple sub-emitters that we have a greater range of what's going on. We'll use just one. So click on that sub-emitter, and as you can see, it's almost entirely an emitter in of itself, a particle system in of itself, but there's one major change. Emission must be a burst or else it simply won't work. So what you're going to do is with this, we're going to go to Shape. It defaults to a sphere, so what happens is you get this kind of roundish burst. Basically like fireworks. Problem is that's not really what we want. Let's go ahead and take a look so you'll see what that looks like. See how it's like facing the, the camera and it goes down below this? We really don't want that. We really want them to bounce up in the air. So just as the main emitter is a cone, we also want the sub-emitters to be a cone. Again, that might not always be the case. Uh, what you just saw with the uh, kind of like the fireworks burst, you might want that if you're using uh, the hand grenade example that we mentioned. Or any kind of a cluster explosion. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the shape of the, again, make sure you're on the sub-emitter. We're going to change it to a cone. And the radius is the bottom, so let's go ahead and change that to 1, and let's make it 0.5. And now we're going to reduce the duration, should only be like half a second, and the lifetime should only be about 1 second, and let's go ahead and increase that speed. So we've taken the sub-emitter, and we've, in we've decreased its duration, decreased its lifetime, increased its speed, because as you saw the particles were moving pretty slowly, we changed it to a cone, so that way the particles will move up and not at the screen, and that way you're not getting the kind of overlap which you really shouldn't see, since that this is meant to be a solid floor. Now what we want to do is we want to go to the renderer, and right now it's using a default particle. We really want to replace this with a splinter. So if I wasn't so lazy, I would create a whole new material, but we really reviewed that process, so at that point, it's really not showing you anything new. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the pre-existing debris material. We're going to drag and drop and put it there. And now we're going to do some of the same things with that that we did with the main particle system. We're going to do rotation over a lifetime. Going to bring that up to 360. 
but we're also going to change its size of a lifetime. We're going to have uh, basically uh, they're disintegrating as they're uh, after the impact. And I think that's just about everything that we want. So we've turned it into a, the emitter into a cone. Its size gets smaller. It rotates. That should about do it. Let's take a look. Oh, the start size probably should be small too, but nice. All right, let's go ahead and change that start size, and then we're just about done. So it defaults to 0.5. Change it to 0.4 might not seem like a, a lot of a change, but since 0.5 was the size that was being used, changing it even by 0.1 is a 20% reduction. So you don't necessarily have to make a big change to get a you know, big result. All right. Make it a little bit smaller. And I'm wondering if we're getting a few too many splinters. Let's try this 20 and 20. there. So as you notice, the splinters are moving up and out, not down, so there's no longer that kind of overlap. So you still have the integrity of that being like a solid ground. I think that's just about everything that we wanted to do. Yep, we put in the min kill speed for the main particle system, and that was really, I think, the only change we made to we made two changes. We added the sub-emitter, of course, but as far as anything else, we really just changed the min kill speed in the collision section. Everything else was what we then did with the sub-emitter. And a sub-emitter, okay, as I said, it's it's a particle system. It can also have sub-emitters, so you can create quite the chain reaction of, of dust clouds and explosions and whatever else that you're trying to do. So you can really make complex um, effects using particle systems. And like I said, this kind of even stretches what you may think of a particle system because it's not exactly small. You're looking at a full board breaking. Alright, I think that should about do it. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll add another video.